Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Maureen Demler and I serve as Deacon at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Wednesday of the 13th week after Pentecost. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, as you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to the city, and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then on to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commanded to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. Here ends the reading. Paul was well acquainted with suffering. In his second letter to the Corinthians, he tells us he was imprisoned, stoned, beaten, flogged, shipwrecked, starved, exhausted, and endangered throughout his life as a follower of Christ. Because of his experiences throughout his letters, Paul was intent on reminding Christians that hardship is to be expected. He said it quite clearly in his letter to the Philippians, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Though the typical human response is to avoid pain at all costs, Paul calls Christians to accept their trials in light of the fact that God suffers with us and because God causes good things to come from our difficulties. In his letter to the Romans, Paul said, We also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Again, in his letter to the Philippians, Paul tells us that suffering is part of being united with Jesus, and thankfully is temporary. Again, in his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, 
By your patience in suffering, you hallowed earthly pain and gave us the example of obedience to your Father's will. Be near us in our times of weakness and pain. Sustain us by your grace that our strength and courage may not fail. Heal us according to your will and help us always to believe that what happens to us here is of little account if you hold us in eternal life. Our Lord and our God. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sundays. If you are unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.